In this video, we're gonna be building one of these Megamoto 212s. This bike I have had for all oh, six or seven years probably. I got it, was a few years old, couple years anyhow, uh, but it was nearly brand new. Um, so I love this mini bike. I've been around these things my whole life and I just sort of stumbled on this. It was a really good deal when I got it and I, I can't believe how, how nice a little bike this is. It's got the hydraulic rear brake, it's got a front suspension, it's got a nice wide fat seat that's super comfortable to ride. I can actually ride, I'll ride my little girl with me on this. Um, when family comes around, I got a couple of nephews that, um, you know, they'll jump on this. And one boy in particular, he, he was riding the heck out of this for a while before he got his own, uh, but they still enjoy this. Uh, I got some buddies that come over. One in particular, he loves this thing. And uh, he's, he's as big or maybe even a little heavier than me. And I'm probably pushing, I'm about 230 right now. And it hauls me around just fine, hauls him around just fine. So this is uh, not a kid's bike. And um, so anyhow, we're gonna be building another one. Now this one again is probably pushing 10 years old and you can't get them just like this anymore. Um, which is a little unfortunate because this thing works really well. Um, now, the only way you can get these is to buy them in a kit. And the bike itself is a little different. They, this bike has, only has rear brake. It's a rear hydraulic brake. The chain or the drive system is all, also just a single unit. There's no jack shaft in the middle. So it you know, drives directly from the, or from the engine directly to the rear wheel. They come now with a jack shaft, and I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Um, they also come with a headlight now. And so a few improvements. Uh, they also come with a front hydraulic brake system now. So you have a front and rear hydraulic brakes in addition to the front suspension. So um, nice big wide seat on the new ones still, and they got the little cargo rack on the new ones still. So that is actually handy. Um, Believe it or not, you can put a milk crate back there and it makes this bike really, really handy to ride around and just do all kind of stuff. So how you get these things is the only way you can get them is to go powersports.com unless you can find one used somewhere. And when you order from gopowersports.com, it's going to come in this box. I haven't opened it yet. I just got it and actually it shipped in the regular UPS truck. Um, I think I got it about a week and a half ago, something like that. And you can see that, that busted strap, that was from the UPS man grabbing that strap to pull it out and it broke the strap or come undone. Um, I didn't look at it, but the UPS man said there's a label on here that says it's something like, I wanna say 150 pounds or something like that. So I was surprised he had it on the truck. I think he was surprised he had it on the truck. Um, it was at the very back of the truck and we actually used the pallet forks on my tractor to unload this thing. So um, that's how it comes. Um, so it's disassembled in the box, but it's supposed to come with everything except a handful of bolts and um, the engine. So you can see I've been to Harbor Freight. I picked up the Predator 212 from Harbor Freight there's the engine. This is just the empty box with, you know, some little bits in it, papers and styrofoam packing and stuff like that. Um, so the first thing that I did after I got the bike, then I went, ran down to my local Harbor Freight and I picked up the engine. And I want to be able to take advantage of the headlight on this bike. So in order to do that, you have to order also a kit to install on this Predator 212 because it will not power the headlight on the bike. So that's why I have it out of the, out of the uh, box here. Every Predator engine, and I just learned this, but apparently Predator engines are built in multiple factories and those factories build them to slightly different spec. So in order to, to order the charging kit, which is in this box here that I ordered off of Amazon, I had to pull the flywheel off of this engine 
and I'll show you that. We'll get it out of the bag here. I had to pull the flywheel off and measure the crankshaft in order to, to order the proper charging kit. I, I never would have guessed that, that Predator engines are not all identical. Uh, I really would not have guessed that, but you know, different manufacturers for that same engine. So um, first thing we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and get that charging kit installed on this engine and sort of get that out of the way. So I'm gonna get you guys set up on a tripod I'll show you what I've already done, and then we'll go ahead and install that charging kit and uh, get this engine out of the way. Okay, so here's our engine. Essentially, when I got it, I took it out of the box, got a little bit of styrofoam packing around it, that plastic bag. I got it up on the workbench, <coughs> laid it over like this, and there are four bolts that hold this cover on. So, one here, one here, one here, and one here, and there is a, a wire that is also captured by the bolt in this one. So I removed those four bolts, put them in my little cup here, pulled off this cover. Be gentle now, because it's, it's attached to these wires over here. Um, I did also uh, pop this clip, but that wire is still attached. So then that exposes the um, this cup that, for the recoil starter and this nut. Now this nut is loose on mine right now but it was tight. So I just used uh, a um, impact gun to remove the nut and it actually freed up fairly easily. So you remove the nut then this cup comes off then the plastic fan comes off and now you're looking at your flywheel. So then, we have to remove this flywheel. To remove the flywheel, take a screwdriver and a hammer, put the nut back on, not all the way, but just down to where it's about flush with the top of the crankshaft. This is the end of the crankshaft that that's threading onto. So that's about flush right there. Take a hammer. Put a little pressure on the flywheel to try to pry it up and wrap the crankshaft. Give it, a, give it a couple of good wraps and that should, that jolt should be enough that if you're applying pressure with a screwdriver, that jolt should pop that sort of bond for the flywheel. Should loosen the flywheel up. I had to beat mine a little more than I expected to. I probably whacked mine seven or eight times. So, but then it finally did free up and then you can remove it. Once it's loose, then you can remove it. And then you're looking at the backside of the engine and what's, what's important now is to measure your flywheel, measure your crankshaft. So on the Amazon listing, and again, I ordered mine from Amazon, the kit, on that listing, it will show you how to measure your flywheel to order the correct kit. The, the diameter on these shafts is slightly different, again, from manufacturer to manufacturer. So get on Amazon or eBay or wherever you prefer and order a Predator 212 charging coil kit you want to make sure you get the kit with the flywheel and the two charging coils. So your original, and, the, and I guess the reason, the reason behind this, so to break it down how this functions is, this engine in the stock configuration has one coil. This, this over here is the ignition coil it only provides spark to the spark plug. That's it. It works on the outside of the flywheel with this magnet. Every time this magnet comes around past that coil, it generates a spark to the spark plug. But it doesn't create any other electricity. We need electrical, you know, electric generated to run the headlight. So we need a flywheel with two more magnets on the inside and coils that can mount here. There's positions already here 
for the coils to mount, they just don't put them on all the engines. So this is the cheapest way to do what I want to do, and that's run that headlight. So here's the kit. Now on Amazon, it said it would take like two weeks or something like that, which I thought was really long. But then it showed up in like four days, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. So in this kit, it didn't come with these. I, I put these in. In this kit, we can see our two charging coils and a new flywheel that has magnets on the inside as well as that one on the outside for the ignition. So we'll still get the same spark that we got before, so the engine will run the same. But now we have two additional magnets on the inside that will work with these coils to generate electricity so that we can run our headlight. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is install these coils. And they come with bolts and we want to be sure that we route the, route the wires in a manner that will not cause problems as well. I'm probably going to fast forward this part. I got a vision burning in my head. A steel steel with an engine of your dread. Bolts are too long. All right, well, rather than cutting those uh, stock bolts down, I ran out to the hardware store. This is an M6-1, 1.00 pitch. And I just took one with me, and I was rooting around. You know, they've got those small boxes of uh, bolts, and I'm looking for something that's about a quarter inch shorter, and that's what I found. I don't even recall what this was, the dimension, the length. Um, I guess I could kind of measure it for you guys if you're sort of looking. This will be real crude. Um, it looks like it's about 15 sixteenths. So... Uh, of course, they're going to call it a metric dimension, but I don't remember what that number was. So you're looking for an M6-1.00 and about 15 sixteenths of an inch. So you're going to have to convert that to metric. So anyhow, I just ran one in, and it, it uh, runs down real nice. Got plenty. Of, it's going to catch plenty of threads. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put some blue Loctite on this, shake it up good. Okay, the next thing we need to do is loosen up this coil because this is a different flywheel. So we're going to have to reset the gap on this coil. So we want to break that loose. Boy, boy that is really tight. Slide that all the way back. Make sure our key's in. And we will go ahead and set our new flywheel. Make sure you grab the new one, the one with the magnets on the inside. We're going to set that on there. anything dragging. That's good. And we will go ahead and uh, huh. okay. now these there's pins on the back of here. They got a jive. There we go. And then there's pins molded into this plastic. They got a jive. I just like to double check. Yeah, that should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these bolts out that are holding this uh, ignition coil on here, and I'm gonna put some Loctite on them. 
Okay, I got a 16 thousandths feeler gauge. That's .016 inches. You could use a business card. I mean, you hear guys talk about that. Um, business cards range, oh man, they fluctuate anywhere up to like, I think I've measured them up to like 25 or 30 thou before. So uh, I don't generally trust business cards. Um, so we're going to use a 16 feeler gauge or 16th hour engine. Maybe give it just a little bit of a bend. So put that up there. We're going to turn it till the magnet is right there. And that should hopefully help us, help us hold everything together. There we go. Hold it up snug. roll over and should not hear any dragging noise. Now you will hear or see references online to uh, aftermarket parts. Again, we're putting this back together. This is essentially a stock flywheel um, that somebody's just modified, add a couple of magnets to it. This is the stock generic um, cast flywheel. You'll see guys talk about setting gap of 30 to 70 thousandths when they are upgrading to billet flywheels, stronger magnets, better coils, but we're using the factory stuff. So we want to keep that air gap about 16. I wouldn't go any more than 20 or 25. Um, again, because it's stock. So when you see guys, you know, talk about, oh, I'm, I'm running, uh, you know, 70 thou air gap on my coil, well, that's because they've upgraded their stuff. But with stock stuff, you put that big air gap on there and it's not going to run. Now, when we're putting this back together, mind this uh, electrical connector. It, it gets bolted in here. Make sure you, uh, make sure you connect that. Okay, so now we've got our uh, two charging coils. Just a wire sticking out of there. For now, we're done with this engine. We may end up um, sort of rotating the uh, starter, but we'll wait till we get the thing mounted on the bike. Okay, let's get this box open. Got a 2022. I'm guessing that's the date. You know, I, I'm not a. I can't read Chinese, but um, it says 2022. Then assemble. Then five. Then assemble. And 12. So does that mean May 12 of 22, or does that mean December 5th of 22? Okay, so I'm just uh, sort of flipping this frame around and uh, sort of inspecting it. I noticed some of these welds look like, you know, sort of typical overseas welds. And uh, I noticed this bracket is bent. And it's bent at a weird angle. And I looked a little closer, like, ah, that's almost broken off of there. It's got this jagged edge down here. That's a broken weld. You can see where it's pulled the paint off or was not painted under there. So I'm going to take... Uh, grab my pliers and bend that down 
and I'll probably wire wheel this area real well. I'm going to grab my MIG welder and re-weld this bracket down where it belongs. All right, well, I uh, pulled the assembly instructions out of that uh, plastic envelope, and in flipping through these, it looks like this is meant to walk you through the steps of uncrating this thing. If it were to come in, like, you know, it's got a metal frame, um, and then the bike is uh, sort of bolted into a metal shipping container, and the majority of the bike is assembled for you. So some of this is going to be relevant, like, oh, right off the bat, you know, the installation or assembly of the front fork assembly. So that, that we can use, uh, but a lot of this stuff is just not going to be on here. So there is a video that Go Power Sports made a couple of years ago now on assembling one of these things. So... It's just about going to be a requirement. I mean, you could fumble through it, but it's going to help you out a bunch if you go over to their video, and I'll put a link in the description. So click that link, and they walk through, they sort of uh, just walk through the whole assembly process in about 40 minutes. So I'm sure there's a few things that they touch on lightly that they could probably go into more depth on, um, but... I would recommend checking that video out. So I'll link that in the description. I'm going to go ahead and fumble through what I can here. And between what I do and show you, and then what, if you go over and watch that other video, you should be able to, you know, get this thing put together no problem. So I'm probably going to put you on a time lapse. If something pops up that is interesting that you'll want to know, I'll make sure I go into detail on that. But that's what we're going to do for now. What I did under here was, you know, of course I attached the throttle, just, you know, the cable just like you normally would, and I ran it through this securement device like you normally would. But I've been fiddling around, what you've been watching me do is add this additional spring. So it's just got this one teeny tiny little puny spring here, and the throttle was real stiff, and if I loosen this nut up enough to where that spring returns the throttle, it just about backed all the way off. So I didn't like that. Um, I don't know if this is a Tef nut. If it is, it's, it's awfully worn out. Um, so anyhow, I added this additional spring here. Um, it's just my little Harbor Freight spring kit. So you can see 
I took advantage of the uh, this cable securement that's not being used here and then I just slipped the other end of it under the head of this one so I mean it's it's working fine now All right, we've come to the point in the build where we need to address the wiring. So we've got some wires dangling up here on the handlebar. There's three connections that need to be made up here. And we need to connect, you know, the wiring on the engine. Well, this is the harness that comes in the kit. And I'm going to try not to get too far in the weeds. This is about the fourth time that I've recorded this little bit. I just keep getting long-winded. I'm going to try to keep this short and to the point. These are three unique connectors. You cannot accidentally swap these. They're not the same connection. One's a three pin, one's a two pin male, one's a two pin female. These three connections go up here on top of the handlebars. The other end of this harness comes down to the engine here. This rectifier we won't need, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it now because in the future, if I want to add a battery with an electric start on this thing, I will need the rectifier then. So I'm going to attach the rectifier right here on the frame. There's a spot, there's a bolt. You can probably see the bolt sticking out right there. I'm going to go ahead and mount this rectifier right up there with that one bolt. And I'm going to plug this plug into it. This ring terminal will go to the engine block. I'm going to put it right here where this other existing kill switch is already going. I'm just going to stack it right in there. So that's going to take care of that ring terminal. These two bullet connectors will get connected to the charging coils that we installed under the flywheel. That's this weird pigtail here. We're going to clip this off and we're going to put female bullet connectors on these two wires. There's a red one and a black one. It doesn't matter, either or, flip-flop them, red or black, red or black, it, it won't matter. So we're going to connect those to these two connections. The best I can understand from the videos that Go Power Sports has made, and they made multiple videos that deal with headlights, and that one main video that I will link in the description, they do, I think in that video, they do kind of a poor job of describing the wiring here. So, but the, as best I can discern from all their videos, the instructions are absolutely no help at all. They don't discuss this at all. The, the best I can figure is these two wires do the same thing. You could run these two together if you wanted to clip them and put them together and then attach it to the kill on the engine. You could do that or... You could use the male, run it to the engine, leave the female dangle, and don't use it. Or vice versa. You could use the female wire, this female bullet connector, attach it to the engine, and leave the male dangle. And it wouldn't matter. Well, you don't want any wires dangling, you know. But you get my point. You could use them both together, or you could use one or the other. So... What's going on on the engine here, this should be, and I didn't follow it all the way back, but this wire comes out from under the gas tank. This should be the coil kill wire here. And it comes down, makes a bullet connector, and it makes another connection then to tie in the low oil shutoff. Well, I don't want that low oil shutoff anyhow. I was going to do away with that, and I really don't like the idea of having a kill switch down here that somebody could fool with. You might be out riding, one of your buddies is, you know, play a trick on you and turn your kill switch off down here. And if you're not looking for it, you're going to fool around with this. You're going to wonder why your bike's starting. So I kind of want to do away with that anyhow because we've got an on and off switch right here on our handlebars. That's our primary. That's, that's the one I want to use anyhow. So what we can do is disconnect this bullet connector here, this main coil wire, we're going to disconnect this bullet connector and we're going to connect this male bullet connector and that will then eliminate this switch and it will also eliminate this low oil shutoff device. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make those connections. I'll show you what it looks like after the fact. And of course, we'll start the bike up and make sure everything functions properly. Pretty good. Oh no, I sorry, I was backwards on the choke there. Yeah, okay. All right, let's see if that wiring works. It ain't much until you rev it. We'll take it for a spin. call that a success all right well I rode it around for I don't know five or six minutes rides fine runs good no issues at all so it's real comfortable to ride um, the only thing that I can tell the difference between that one and this one is this one might have a little more vibration than that one well I, I know it does that one runs really really smooth when you ride it it pulls nice and smooth this one, when I got on the throttle, it seemed like, I think maybe that jack shaft assembly, there's more rotating parts, there's more opportunity for vibration, and I think maybe that's the difference, because that one, again, does not have the jack shaft, it's just, um, you know, old school centrifugal clutch on the engine, straight back to the rear wheel. So, other than that, I'm real happy with it. So, I wanted to show you guys sort of the aftermath of what we got going on over here 
bolts and stuff like that that we didn't talk about earlier um, and sort of leftover parts. So this thing, um, I think I showed this to you earlier. This looks to be a aluminum copy of the brass piece that's in the drive pulley. So that drive pulley came with zip ties on it and I wonder if they included this in a bag in a separate sort of kit than that drive pulley and I wonder if they you know miscommunication or whatever thought that maybe there's not this sleeve and they just included an aluminum one when it already had a brass one I don't know that's that's the only thing I could figure there um, I took this is the uh, throttle uh, limit screw I just went ahead and removed it um, of course, we don't need the key that came in that Predator engine, so there's that. This was some confusion on my part with this, this bolt and washers. So this bolt was supposed to hold the sprocket side of the jack shaft, and I, don't, I, I was mistaken. I was thinking that this bolt was meant to hold the drive pulley onto the crankshaft, and I know better than that. I just wasn't thinking. So anyhow, I saved this to use it into the crankshaft there toward the end, and I grabbed an identical bolt that I had in one of my bolt bins and put it on the jack shaft with a you know washers. So um, this just ended up being extra because the crankshaft bolts, and they tell you this right off the bat, you know, on the Go Power Sports website, and I already had bought some 516 24 bolts. And you can see I bought an assortment of them. And I think I bought, you know, four different lengths. I think I bought two and a quarter, two and a half, three, and three and a half. And I think I used that two and a quarter. So um, the other thing that, that uh, they don't tell you on the website, and I only learned beforehand because watching that uh, video that I'll link down in the description, you need more 516 24 bolts to mount those plates on the side of that Predator engine, the plates that attach the jack shaft cover, that whole clutch assembly, that big plastic cover. So you need 5 16 24 bolts to attach that. So I went ahead and got an assortment because I didn't know what length I would need. So well, let me just, I'll tell you what you guys are gonna need to get. So these are one inch, and I think the four bolts that I got that I used, I'm thinking were three quarter inch. So 5 16 24 thread by three quarter inch, you're gonna need four of those bolts. And again, depending on your engine situation, get yourself an assortment of a little bit longer bolts, but I think I used the two and a quarter. I think that's what it was. No, I take that back. I probably either used inch and three quarter or I doubt I use three and a quarter. Just get yourself an assortment anywhere from anywhere from three inch down to inch and a half. Go ahead and spend a few cents and get an assortment and you'll have them on hand. Give you some, you know, adjustability when you're mounting your engine. <clears throat> now these bolts here, the only thing I can think is these are included in the kit and they're meant to take the place of these bolts, the ones that mount those uh, plates to the side of the Predator engine. That's the only thing I can think, those four bolts. And then here are four bolts with nuts, and the only thing I can think is maybe those are meant to mount the engine to the frame. And the bolts that I use to mount the engine to the frame, I'd grab some 5 16 coarse thread out of my bolt bin with lock nuts. And that's how I mounted the engine to the frame. So um, I guess the one thing I don't know if we talked about or not was the, the price of this thing. So I think I sat down the other day and I figured it up. I think I'm about $950 into this thing. And that breaks down to I think 700 or seven something for the frame. And then uh, the Predator engine, I just paid regular retail at Harbor Freight, uh, plus tax, put that to like 160 or 165 bucks. Then I bought that kit 
the charging coil kit, you know, with the flywheel, and I think that was 60 or 70 bucks. And then add on just a few miscellaneous, you know, all those bolts. That 5 16 24 thread bolts, those are kind of expensive. Um, I want to say each one of them bolts, the longer ones, were like 85 or 90 cents a piece. So, you know, when you're grabbing a dozen of them just to have on hand, you know, it's not nothing. So all that stuff added up. You know, then you got a little bit of oil, you got a little bit of gasoline, some wire ties, you know, wire crimp fittings and stuff like that. I'm into it for about 950 bucks. And that is an expensive mini bike when you compare it to like a Coleman. But the quality of these Mega Motos, in my previous experience with that other one, the quality of that bike far surpasses those Coleman's. So I'm hoping that this will be as good or better than that bike that's my hope so with that in mind you know if i'm not doing repairs all the time and it's a reliable bike and, and anybody can ride it then then it's well worth the money so i hope i helped you with this one guys if you've got any questions at all leave them in the comments down below and i'll answer as best i can if you like this video click the thumbs up button if you want to see me working on all kinds of stuff out here in the garage click the subscribe button until the next time, keep on tinkering.